Christian McCaffrey, the 49ers running back, a guy who uh, was traded to San Francisco last year. It's been a home run acquisition for the Niners uh, since his arrival. Uh, he's also doing well off the field. Is uh, Also, uh, as has been pointed out several times on this show. Several times? Yeah, several okay. times. Right. Uh, we'll get an update on that here shortly. You should probably uh, put it out again. But yeah. yeah. Uh, but Christian McCaffrey recently talked with Rich Eisen about the running back position and the devaluing of the running back position and in the process did a little comparison between how they're viewed and wide receivers are viewed take a listen you know i don't know when the value of a yard got diminished and when i look at what you know receivers make and slot receivers make around the league and then you look at what running backs make we're at the bottom of the list and and you know you got backs who <laughs> had 2000 yard seasons you've had backs who've had 750 to 800 yards receiving and you know, a lot of people use the injury argument, but and you know, I don't, I don't know if that's necessarily valid when you look at some of the receivers who have been hurt, who still get big contracts. And so, I understand we touch the ball the most, but in my opinion, I think we create a lot of value in doing so as well. Somewhere along the line, the uh, the franchise tag and what the market did to the running back position, I think they're definitely undervalued. And I think if you ask the running backs around the league they would probably say the same thing. So that was Christian McCaffrey talking with Rich Eisen uh, uh, and just a couple of days ago about the situation. I mean... It's it, not a horrible ar- argument. But is will it change? No, but... And, and that has a lot to do with the way the game's changed as far as, far as you know, the, the ability to create big plays, score points uh, through the passing game, which is where a lot of you know offensive you know minded coaches and offensive minds it's how they look at it now i mean the rules are set up for this to be a passing game i mean look at pass interference for example it's not automatic first down 15 yards like it is in college you you get the distance you can heave a ball 50 50 yards downfield it can be an awful read it could be an awful throw it could be the wrong route Yet, if that defensive back interferes with the wide receiver, you get the 50-yard gain. So, even how the rules are set up, it, it feeds more into, you know, wanting to find, if you've got a superstar quarterback that can sling it around, and you're throwing the football 60% of the time now, um, more often than not, you're going to create some big plays. There's some legitimacy to his argument. I, I th- here's the hard thing about, um, and especially with where he's at now at San Francisco, there's no doubt Christian McCaffrey is one of the best players in the league. That's not even debatable. Um, you know, he's, he's at the top of the market or, or close to the top of the market for running backs as far as what they're being paid, and he's obviously more than just that. But wouldn't you say that the San Francisco 49ers would be the perfect case study for – did they have an issue running the football before Christian McCaffrey got there? No. And, and that's more of the issue is – if you look at how running backs are valued, they're not being devalued because they're, they aren't special or they aren't special players. They're being devalued because you can take a guy that you find in the seventh round of the draft, like Isaiah Pacheco for the Kansas City Chiefs, and he could come in and he can help your team win a Super Bowl. You could find guys who are undrafted. You could find guys who are in the middle, drafted in the middle rounds. They don't have to be a, a first-round top-ten pick. And so... It's not that, you know, Saquon Barkley's not special or Christian McCaffrey's not special or B. John Robinson, who was a draft pick this year, wasn't special. It's not that. It's just every single year we see a guy who is either drafted in later mid-rounds, maybe even undrafted, or, you know, someone else step into a role where they end up being an impactful running back and you don't have to pay him as much. So if you have money, right, you got a bank account, and you're figuring out how to spend your money, right? And you've got to build out a football roster. You're obviously going to spend on a quarterback first. But then you're going to look at saying, okay, i, I got to protect this guy. So I'm going to spend some on the offensive line. And I, and I need someone for him to throw to, so I'm going to spend on some wide receivers. But, you know, as far as the running back goes, you can find guys that are going to be able to step up and be able to give you a lot of good, a lot, a lot of good production that aren't going to cost as much. Like, that's more of what's devalued the running back, in my opinion, more so than anything else. 
even though there are special guys like Christian McCaffrey in the league. It's just that's what they're battling is you've got a new crop of running backs coming in every year that are fresh legs, that can give you 1,000 yards, maybe even more than that, and they're going to be a lot cheaper than you are. To your point, the Niners have had a different leading rusher every year the past five years. Like the last time they had a guy who led the team in rushing consecutive years in a row it was Carlos Hyde back in 2015 to 2017. Hmm. So that's like a five-year, six-year sample size of, hey, whoever, just give somebody the ball. And, and I think majority of those guys are now with the Dolphins, it seems like. Uh, yeah. so like it is a game of trends, familiar. too, though. You know, it is trends. There may be a coach that comes along that – revitalizes and rejuvenates and says you know what we're going back to this style of play we're gonna we're gonna go ground and pound and it you know the trends dictate where kids are are training and where they're playing most kids are training and playing at the receiver's position or the quarterback's position seven on seven created a culture where things things turned Things turned into, you know, I'm, I've am i seen guys that were close to 300 pounds trying to play receiver. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, um, because for a long time, I'll the, just linemen, get in shape later. the linemen were getting left <laughs> out. There were, there were no drills. There were no competition for linemen. So the big boys were trying to do skill positions as well. Um. And and so the trend turned to throwing the ball so much in this running gun style of, of playing football and score quick and 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 how you, you approach it, that that's become what everybody where the best athletes are going and that's where they're training and, and what they're you know, what they're preparing to do. So the position of running back has been minimized in in more ways than one at different different levels. But it, you know, trends trends would say, like for instance, when when I was coming in, the trend of the big backer had became a thing. Like backers weren't big; they were small. They were more compact. They were quick versus maybe fast. But if you if you go back, you know. A while back, you know, guys like Dick Buckus and all those guys, they were they were big backers too. And then it went to smaller backers and then it went back to big backers. You know, there was there was a time where defensive ends were no different than a defense really in a lot of ways, no different than a defensive tackle. You know, so as as the need is created, the demand changes. Like right. you, you have you know you have just the there's just the the kind of the evolution of of how things I, are done. I, I think the hard part about thinking it's going to go back is for the exact example that you pointed out, where everyone all these kids are being trained in seven on seven right now. So you're not finding that run blocking tight end. You got to teach them. You got to coach them. You're, you're playing in more three wide receiver sets because. Those are the players that are more skillful in that way. If you're a running back, you got to learn how to catch the football out of the backfield. Like, even offensive linemen, as you look at the pro- proliferation of the spread offenses out of high school, they're not running wing T and, you know, the option, midline option, or the triple option anymore. It's all spread. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I don't think that's like being rolled back and, and putting, you know, putting that back in the box. Like, I, I think this is not so much a, a trend. And, and you've got examples of teams, right? But think about the Baltimore Ravens. Like, I think we'd largely say they were a run-first team in the past, or at least they have been with you know, Lamar at quarterback. And even they're in a transition now. AFC North, they, in general, were run-first teams. Used to be. I mean, that's yeah. all changed now, yeah. though. Yeah. But, but if you be, look yeah, at Baltimore, they were 28th in passing last year. What did they do this offseason? They hired Todd Munkin. Is he known to run the football? No. He, he's known to spread this thing out and sling the push the football vertically downfield. And you look at their acquisitions, you know, signing Odell Beckham, signing Nelson Aguilar, drafting Zay Flowers. It's all about the passing game. And, like, they've been probably the case of, if, if, you know, for anyone, drafting offensive linemen, 
you know, being able to, you know, bring in more running backs, have a running back stable back there, drafting tight ends who are capable of run blocking and then releasing out off play action and boots. So I, I just, I, I don't, I mean, there might be examples. I mean, even if you said the Seattle Seahawks, who I think two years ago, three years ago, they might have been the number one team in running the football. Last year, they were in the top half, I think, in passing with Geno in his first year starting. So I, I just think it's a, it's a trend that it, it's not so much a trend, it's just the way the league's moving. And I think it has a lot to do with what you just mentioned and the grassroots of that's what's coming up from junior high to high school, high school to college, college to the NFL. You just you don't see the traditional, you know, bigger bodies and all that. Everyone's getting smaller, faster, more athletic, has to be able to play out in space. And and I think that's here to stay. Now you might have some teams that like the Falcons who draft B. John Robinson and they say, Well, we wanna, you know, run the football. They they ran the football more than anyone last year. But a lot of that had to do too with the fact they had a rookie quarterback who didn't play until the back end of the season. You know, there's a lot of probably factors that played a part in it. And and let's say they do try to run the football as much. And they go seven and ten again. Is Arthur Smith back? No. I mean, that's the hard part too. Is when you're selling the NFL, you're selling the face of your franchise, which is a quarterback. And, and it's hard if that guy, unless he's Lamar Jackson, can run like Lamar. It's hard to be able to sell that or get as pumped about it. It's just not as appealing. And I think if you're a team that's a sub five hundred team, you got to have something to sell, something that's appealing. And, and I, don't, I don't really know. And that's why I, I always thought Atlanta was going to be the destination for, you know, Deshaun Watson. I, I really did. I, I'm still shocked that they're going into the season the way they're going into the season, that they weren't going to look at taking a quarterback where they were. I mean, it's just it, – it's no disrespect for Desmond, Desmond Ritter. It's just you would have thought they would want to brought in more competition there. But that wasn't the case. So, I mean, again, we'll, we'll see what, what it looks like. I just think this league is now built and it's going to sustain itself with the way the rules are for this to be a passing game. Yeah, don't, don't you miss the old days, though? Just run it on first down, run it on second down. I mean, and if you're, a, Notre, what if you're a Notre Dame oh. fan, you definitely miss it, right? Come Look on, at all man. their running backs, you know? Like, yeah. I enjoy running backs. I'm sorry. Some of my biggest heroes were running backs. Damn right. 